Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Between Us Foods. We have our San Jose panel here today um, of San Jose directors. Um, to, right now we're going to be basically talking about the biggest challenges that we face as directors and some of the best rewards that we get in return. So, Between Us Foods, let's talk about it. All right, welcome back, guys. Even What's though up? technically we didn't go anywhere. Uh, <laughs> thanks for um, having us. Uh, yeah, no All problem. Right. Um, so, I mean, we kind of talked about it a little bit, um, and it kind of came up um, in the first part of this conversation, which mm -hmm. if you guys haven't seen it yet or heard it yet, go watch that, mm -hmm. check it out. Um, but basically, um, being a director is not easy, right? I, that's I think that's kind of something that everyone knows, mm -hmm. but like I think a lot of people don't really like get the opportunity to sit down with us, I guess, and just have us express ourselves, yeah. I guess, about like just kind of the struggles that we go day to day yeah. and stuff. So like in general, um, just surface level, what are the biggest challenges that you guys face as a director? For us, uh, injuries oh. and mm. attendance. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And um, I feel like that's the one like top two for our team because one we dance in a garage on concrete right so every oh, semester we have like oh i have shin splints mm. uh, uh something hurts in my joints it's like oh yeah well oh, we're man. stomping on concrete so mm -hmm. it's like dang you know knowing when to go full full out on like concrete floors i know it's definitely bad for your knees and whatnot but um that and attendance yeah someone's always sick that's always someone has an injury and then you know as a director you just kind of have to like trust them give them their word even right. though they might post something so, something else on Snapchat. Like, it's a little oh, fishy. Yeah. It's a little saying, fishy. Ah. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> oh gosh. I, but like, you know when someone gets sick, it's not always just one person or it's never just one oh, person. No. It's, no. It Everyone. goes around. Yeah. Everyone touches like, each other don't and touch like, wiping each other. their face. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. We always say it's, and it always happens for us. It's so weird. We always call it like the curse, <laughs> the week prior curse where like the week prior to competition, everybody's getting sick. Everybody's getting hurt, and it's just like, what is going on? Like, and like you said, the attendance thing too. It's funny. Another thing that we say is like, we'll we will only have like everybody present on like the day before the competition. Day before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, yes. somebody's missing every day. At least one person is missing. But I mean, mm -hmm. again, like everybody has their own lives, and again, yeah. people get sick or they get hurt or like, what are you what are you gonna do yeah. about it? But got roll the punches. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's, it's that balance of like. I understand, but dude, like, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, like, exactly. Yeah. Like, exactly. You made a commitment, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. hard to like balance that line or like you know weigh the scales mm -hmm. on either side. Yeah, yeah, and I've heard some people say like, I mean, not to sound like like an old person or anything, <laughs> but I've heard even people say like when we were growing up in the dance community, you you didn't miss practice, Never. period. Oh, you yeah. just didn't like, and and if you did, you were in a lot of trouble for it, and now it seems a lot more likely that people just kind of miss practice. Yeah. And it's like, and it's frustrating for us again, because we're like, I would never miss practice. Like I'm here every single day. Mm -hmm. But again, we have to kind of think about, uh, take people's lives into consideration mm -hmm. and understand that every, everybody's kind of like got something going on, which I think for me is probably one of my biggest challenges is like when you have, when you're working with so many people and so many different people, mm -hmm. you have to really learn how to communicate in like a way that works for the team, like oh, all yeah. together, but also like as individuals, you might talk to somebody one way, then it might tra not translate to somebody else in the same as way. Well, yeah. So you have to kind of get to know everybody and know how to communicate with people mm -hmm. in different ways that, it, that it's going to actually like make sense to that person. Um, and obviously I think working with a lot of people too is taking their feelings into consideration, even mm -hmm. though I'm, I'm like, I said it before, but like, I'm a control freak. I'm also <laughs> like a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like for me being in the director's seat can get really tough, uh, in terms of like me wanting everybody to be happy when you're in a room with 50, 60 people and you're doing something because you want them to like grow and you want them to be happy and you want them to have fun. And sometimes that's not gonna happen for everybody. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a couple people who don't like something that's going on or you know, we're all people and we're all adults and sometimes some stuff might happen that's like not, you know, somebody might feel a certain way about it. Mm -hmm. So you, I'm always trying to like, I think I, sometimes I stress myself out over trying to please everybody and trying to always do something that's like, okay, cool, are they gonna like this? You know, are they gonna feel good about this? And then having to 
to mend those bridges when sometimes it gets a little rough can definitely take a toll, I think, on the directors, but also just like the team in general. Yeah. Like we all kind of have to work together and we have to pull each other through. So one of the challenges I think is just, you know, making sure that the ball stays rolling, that you keep the momentum there and that yeah, people are having fun the whole time too, I think is really important because mm-hmm. at yeah. the end of the day, that's why we're here. We're dancing because we love it and we like to have fun. So exactly. I think it sometimes gets hard, but it can also be really rewarding in that sense. Yeah. yeah. And I think as leaders, like we're very open to feedback, but mm-hmm. a lot of times like I start to overthink that feedback. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, so how many other people feel this way? Or exactly. Like, yeah. exactly. And it's like, oh my God, like you start to question every decision yep. that you make. And it's, yep. it's just, it's rough because yeah, like not every single person is going to be a hundred percent satisfied because if everyone else was directors of their own respective teams, like of course they're going to run things differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think, um, I think that's something that a lot of, um, I guess people don't realize is the amount of mental like strength that you have to have as a director. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of times where I just doubt myself and I just like don't understand why I ended up where I was and like if I'm the right person for this job. And it's just, you know, ultimately it's like there's no one that's going to really like pull me out of that funk mm-hmm. except myself, you yeah. know, like so yeah. I just believe like in in myself so that other people believe in me yeah, basically, you yeah. Know? Like, is that, that called that imposter call. syndrome like I, I think so yeah where you're Something like that, yeah. you almost feel like you said like you don't deserve the things you were given mm-hmm. or like should I be doing this yeah that's something that happens a lot I feel like yeah but I think it takes one moment I feel like every time that happens someone on my team always just drops something like oh by the way I just really appreciate what you're doing mm-hmm. and that's like what really like brings me back on track mm-hmm. right especially if you have like a really hard week like you can kind of feel the weight of like this, the team, the set, and everything mm-hmm. just kind of like falling in. You're like, oh my God, am yeah. I choosing the right decisions? And yeah. then it just takes one person on your team just be like, you know, I'm just really proud of you and like, thank you for being you and doing what you do. Cause sometimes my team will drop that to me, especially if they notice that I'm like really trying to like make things work and like really stressed out there. Like, you know, you're doing fine. Mm-hmm. Just like keep mm-hmm. your head up. It does, it does get a little stressful. But, yeah. um, you know, as a director, you have to take everyone's word for granted and then um, give them the benefit of the doubt and then just trust their feelings and hopefully they can reciprocate it back to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of times that our stress kind of translate as we're being 100% closed off from you. Right. Yes. <laughs> you know? yes. and it, oh, but it's God. just like, I'm really just trying to navigate, you know, yeah. like yeah. make sure that I'm making like, the right move. Like what's the next step? Yeah, I've yeah. had people be like, oh, I wanted to tell you something, but like, I don't want to stress you out. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I'm stressed <laughs> out anyway. Like I'm <laughs> like, going to wait. be stressed out, but I'd rather okay. know then so that I can fix it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or, or I can try to do whatever it is that you're asking yeah. because like regardless of if we're set building or whatever we're doing, to be honest, again, we've said this before, but like, I'm always thinking about stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm always stressing out over something. So like, mm-hmm. really, Definitely. it's not, you're not going to add more stress. The stress is already there. Yeah. So just like, <laughs> at least just inform me. So like, it's like a feather compared to what we have. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Know. But I mean, it's also like, I don't, I also don't want that to be seen in a negative light. Like I'm not saying like a hundred percent stress all the time. That's right. all I feel. Obviously that's not the case. Um, and almost like I would even say like, I kind of enjoy the stress. Yeah. And I think part of being a dancer, even just like in general, not even like a director, but a dancer, I've always said like, if you're gonna do this and you're gonna like really, really do this, you kind of have to like enjoy the struggle. You have to kind of enjoy the bad parts that come with it or else you're gonna spend a lot of time not liking what you're doing because the fact of the matter is, you're gonna have that stress be there most of the time. So if you can't learn to live with it and like not only live with it, but like embrace it and love that part of it, mm-hmm. you're not going to get very far because that's going to be honestly half the time you're going to be stressed about something, but mm-hmm. it's just part of the part of the machine that you're making work. Yeah. I don't know if your guys' dancers also say the same thing. They're like, I'm a little intimidated to go up to you because, oh, yeah. right. <laughs> because you have this space. <laughs> They're like, oh, I want to like tell you I'm injured, but I don't. I don't want to seem like I'm copping out. I'm like, no, you should let me know about every single thing that's happening so I can like keep little tabs. It's like when you have a web browser, you have like 30 million tabs, Mm. literally my mind when it comes to like rehearsal. So like I have a lot of dancers always come up to me like, I'm kind of like scared to tell you. So they'll tell someone else on the team who's more comfortable with me and then they'll tell me. It's like Mm. a lot of telephone. I'm like, I just go straight to them. Sometimes things can get lost in translation. Exactly, so I just go straight to them. I'm like, so I heard you said this. And they're like, oh no, I didn't mean it that way. I was like, no, it's fine. Just just talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times though, that can be a tool because like I think um, my captains that I basically 
I kind of look at them as a bridge between myself and the rest of the team because yeah. I it's yeah as one person it's hard to talk to 35 or so people like one on one and just make sure I hear all of their information every single day yeah. you know like I so I have some like you know like knights out there on the battlefield to help yeah. me out mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah a little for sure. bit it's so. funny because I always have said like uh, a dance team is like a relationship. Yeah, and the in the way that like communication is super important. Mm-hmm. If you're brushing stuff under the rug, or if you're kind of like harboring something, that's the kind of stuff that could eventually like blow up and mm-hmm. could cause like some tension or whatever. Um, you have to listen. You have to like care for this person. Like, and in this person, it's the dance team. Like, you're again part of that relationship is you're gonna have like rocky moments, but mm-hmm. it's really important to like tra- stay transparent to communicate all the time to say, hey, this works for me and this doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. So that you can always kind of like strike that balance of like, okay, like let's do it this way instead or or whatever right. decision you have to make. It's important that the communication goes both ways. Yeah, and that definitely. there isn't, hopefully there isn't that like, oh, like I'm scared to tell you. Like you wanna make them yeah. feel comfortable enough mm-hmm. so that they can tell you anything. Like I always like, I try to always push like, I'm a director, but I'm also a team member. Like I'm also mm-hmm. dancing right next to you. Like mm-hmm. we're literally the same. The only difference is I, I start the class or I start the pro- practice just saying, hey guys, this is what we're doing today. And then we all do it together. Like I'm doing it right there with you. So mm-hmm. it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it, it's understandable that, you know, they. part of it is that they care for you. Yeah. And that, and again, they don't want to put more on your plate because they're like, you're already doing Super this, this and this. Out. I don't want to add to it, but it's like, just you know it's better yeah. you tell me just like, communicate yeah, yeah we sure. uh right. we're very big on energies at cm mm-hmm. and then we talk about um the energy you bring in is what we'll cultivate so if you come in with like school stress work stress personal life something tragic happens like talk to us so we can yeah. diffuse it because like you said if you harbor it on the inside someone next to you is going to feel that energy and it kind of just spreads like a virus yeah oh yeah and then definitely. you have those uh rehearsals where you can just feel the tension in the right. air you can like literally like cut it yeah <laughs> it's really knife. unfortunate yeah. yeah yeah so it's just like we always talk about like hey just leave your stresses at the door but if it's something that's really bugging you and you have to bring it into practice then talk to us and the board first and then let's see what we can do yeah yeah so oh man interpersonal relationships with the students as well mm-hmm. or not students sorry the team members yeah uh, like is also like a big factor Super that's, sure that's, yeah because yeah. i was like i think one of the biggest challenges was i think during one of our prep weeks um there was two of my members that literally didn't like each other mm. and then they had to like basically dance right next to each other like the whole time it's like feed off of each other's energies but yeah. it's like it's like that person <laughs> like, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah, oh yeah. god it was that was so rough and then yeah yeah like i don't know it's it's hard when especially like to fight the clickiness of like your team especially i mean i assume with a bigger team it's even harder yeah it is it is harder to like uh i've heard it put in a way of like i know some people who are on smaller teams and and because they're on smaller teams they're like we're just always together so if there's like 30 of us or 25 of us we kind of don't have a choice we're just always all in one room we're all in one space always together and with 60 people yeah at the beginning of practice or at the end of practice you're we're obviously not all gonna sit in a circle of 60 (laughs) Mm -hmm. and have clear conversations with everybody like there's definitely gonna be like some people kind of hang out over here and some people kind of hang out over here, but mm. I don't feel like it's clicky. It's just like, again, there's just a lot of us. Yeah. And, and it's and it's cool because even though these groups are happening, like in terms of like hanging out, a lot of the times the groups will always just move around. People will oh, just, yeah. I'll just move group to group kind of and be like, hey, what's going on over here? Hey, what's going on over here? Like, <laughs> and it's all cool. Like everybody's really, really close still and everybody's like really good friends. So luckily I don't feel like it's clicky, but I can definitely see how, again, like sometimes, you you get close to certain people or you trust certain people it's with natural, some things yeah. and you're gonna They'll gravitate naturally make their own to those subgroups. people. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say there are clicks. Yeah. They're yeah. not gonna be like, it oh, can you can't stand get with that those. way though. It, it can. can. And 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 that's always like ew, like yeah. that can get a little bit hard mm. to navigate to. But yeah. I think yeah. if as long as like you're also like making sure that in the studio is is the most important for mm-hmm. me. To be honest, like you said, like that that situation with like your dancers, like I've always told them like you guys, I'm not forcing you guys to be best friends, but if you're going to be in the studio on this dance team during these hours, you guys are teammates. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah. have to be friends. 
yeah, but teammates. be teammates. And being teammates means supporting each other, right. means dancing next to each other, means, like you said, the giving off good energy, people to feed off of. You do that for a couple hours, and then you can get in your car and go home. You don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. Right. I would hope that's not the case, because <laughs> that would suck, too. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, you, we're not forcing you guys to be best friends, but, like, as a teammate, you kind of have... A responsibility to each other and the team to like do things a certain way and make sure that the energy is like you said. Yeah. Almost adult good. thing is definitely just supporting each other. Even if you don't like that person, you don't have to like them, but yeah. you also don't have to put the energy to hate them no. in practice. No. Yeah. 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 It's a terrible thing to do. So it's just like, just respect each other. We always try to emphasize and see that we're all family. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and like you said, like, you know, uh, they, the dancers tend to put us on like another pedestal, like, Oh, you're a director. I, sh- I, I can't really go up to you, but it's not like, in practice, I'm a director, but outside of practice, I'm still your friend. Yeah, we're I'm homies. Still someone that, yeah. yeah, we're oh, homies. Yeah. Like I can, you can help you out. You can help me out. Yeah, and um, that's kind of one of the biggest things that we do right after practice is go bond at Denny's. Nice. Because it's the only thing open. Or from right. my, you know, yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, hey. yes, it's sir. like just two exits down. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, kind right. of switch, flipping the script a little bit. So like that was kind of a, some of our struggles. Like what's we struggle for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. What is the best things that come out of either being a director or just being kind of around these people? Um, I mean, in general, obviously, we've uh, we talked a lot about just growing as a person and growing as a leader. Um, that's kind of a personal, um, I guess, reward that we get received back from all of our hard work. Mm-hmm. But like, um, just in general, like, what else do you guys see that um, you've taken away from your whole experience? Mm. Well. For us, since we started at Hip Hop Club, like we always say Hip Hop Club and then Commonality, that's our timeline. Gotcha. Um, me and Matt, we always talk about how like we wish in our college years we had a collegiate dance team, like, you know, Berkeley and whatnot. They have all these like a plethora of dance teams that you can grow up with throughout your college years. Mm-hmm. And we kind of had this little club that did like little side gigs. Um, but like we, for Commonality, once we started this, we started getting a lot of people telling us like, you know, you changed our, our lives forever. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, I would have no friends. I would probably just be stuck in my dorm, you know, just like finding out what to do. And a lot of them said that they found a life at commonality. And mm, just like oh, hearing that, that, it's like, dang, like something that we were able to create and then just impacted so many lives. And even for people to get our logo tattooed on them, like is like mind blowing, you know, I feel like that's what makes it super rewarding when people say like, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have enjoyed my life here mm. and it's just like dang that's a really heavy mm-hmm. set of words to say that's, so it's yeah, just when people say that. that it's just like dang that's amazing for yeah. sure yeah i think the same i think the relationships that i've built with people and uh like you said just the the moments of of gratefulness between friends and mm-hmm. like you said family essentially like you get really close to these people and these are the people that i see five days out of the week I honestly sometimes see my dance family more than like my real family yeah. sometimes, you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> which is a whole nother conversation. But, um, you know, it, I think that's one of the most rewarding things is getting to build those relationships and getting to know such like incredible people. Um, another thing that I think is pretty rewarding on the more like dance side mm-hmm. is, uh, getting to watch people go and do other things with dance. Oh my so God, like they yes. pass through and they and they come and they give us their time and they're with us for however long. And then you see them start to go teach more classes or they move to Bridge LA out. to go pursue it or like mm-hmm. whatever they're gonna do. Like, I think that's really, really fun to watch them grow even outside of the team. Cause I think for me anyway, like I've always said, like I want to teach people to be better than me. Like that's my goal. Oh, yes. It's not about teaching them to be me it's not about teaching them to be as good but more so like i want to teach people to be better to to move past whatever this is and if they want to stay for their whole life please do that's great that's cool but yeah exactly (laughs) but but again like people are going to move on and people are going to do different stuff and to see them carry the values or carry like certain things that they learned here is really really cool to see i think uh it shows how much something can grow if you just kind of give it the space to and you don't have yeah. to confine it. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's really beautiful to see things be planted maybe here. And then when they grow, they grow to whatever else mm-hmm. they become. Yeah, they won't forget their roots either. Oh, yeah. definitely. And it really is just about building those memories and does yeah. experiences and stuff. And I mm-hmm. think it's something that we very much take for granted every single time because I think every season, um, however long your guys' seasons, um, however you run it, mm-hmm. um, like 
it's never going to be that same group of people. There's always going to be people that come out and in, and it's just creating the memories with the group of, that you currently have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, I know one of my favorite memories that was like, um, Oh, uh, hold on. <laughs> I'm getting like weird, teary, teary eyed. Uh -huh. um, but basically like, I think it was my first season um, directing by myself and we were about to do Evo evolution. Mm -hmm. um, and, I think we kind of caught it on camera actually we have like a video out there that Vanessa um, had edited um, mm. but basically right before we were going on stage we were all just hugging each other yeah. and we were all like tearing up and like just like getting super hyped and stuff and just that's like weirdly one of my favorite moments because I feel like it, it was like weirdly at that moment like I knew that um, what I was doing was something that is great yeah um, for more than just myself yeah yeah and I mean on top of that too like seeing the people grow like yeah like agreeing with you i mean there's already people that have surpassed me right and i just love like watching them like kind of flourish yeah you know, whatever it is however little or big um of, of an influence that i've given them mm -hmm. like i'm glad to have been a part of that journey For sure you know yeah. so one thing that we say too is like before we go on stage like this is the last time with the same <laughs> amount of people at this moment we'll yeah. ever do this set with mm -hmm. the same people because every season someone either drops or we add on to the family right so we always emphasize that like just savor the moments like you know it's the little things it's those days where it's 4 a.m and we're dancing we're all mad at each other but like <laughs> 10 years from now you're gonna be like oh i remember that one time we did hell week and you know yeah. especially if it's a successful season of like you know quote unquote placing like like all that stress leading up to it and all those injuries and tears and like just making it successful it just like makes it so much more worth it so even at those moments we always just tell them like enjoy everything yeah yeah obviously like competing and like getting to to put in you know it's funny you work for months and months and months on a set you can work for months to go do something for five minutes and yeah. be done and it's <laughs> over in a flash it's over in the blink of an eye and you're just like whoa like that was it so obviously that is very rewarding in itself but like you like even you kind of getting choked up just talking about something mm -hmm. it's beautiful like that's those are the moments that you really really will remember and you'll mm -hmm. really cherish even more than first place yeah, yeah. you know what i mean first place is nice it's, it's cool. cool but <laughs> it's like, but it's the moments leading up to that that i think are are much more valued or mm -hmm. they hold more value i think to me and i think we can all agree on that yeah oh definitely yeah yeah so um now, kind of bringing it back to our audience question, uh, <laughs> we ask people on Instagram, yeah. um, basically to ask a, eh, ask us a question, um, and this is from Soupy Sauce. Um, hey, <laughs> how do you help members stay engaged with the team when they're not blocked in as core? Oh, good question. <laughs> Which is an interesting other yeah. challenge, right? Wow. I, I mean, I'm literally blocking our set our set for this season right now, so it's. It's, this is kind of weird, weirdly relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but what's your guys' take on it? Um, um, it's something that we've had to learn how to do um, because for a while it was a little bit tough when you're asking everybody to be there and maybe we're blocking a piece that you're not in or maybe sometimes some dancers might not even really get a spot in the set. Mm -hmm. uh, we do casting and... Our team is very like, uh, you earn your spot, yeah. uh, regardless of how long you've been with us or whatever, you yeah. earn your spot. And sometimes maybe you don't get casted in certain things. And sometimes that can get really difficult. Um, but I think what we do or what we try to do is for the few months leading up to competition, uh, while we're doing our blocking, we're blessed to like be in a studio with a, a bunch of different like mini studios and like we're given like a lot of freedom to use those when we want. So usually we'll be blocking in the main studio mm -hmm. and then whoever's not in that piece, you're either practicing something. But if again, if you're not in the set or if you don't have a piece of practice, we'll just do training outside of that. So we'll usually try to do even if it's just like um, if I'm not in the room someone else is blocking and I have like 10 people outside with me, I'm like, yo, like let's go learn this piece that I have or I'll teach them a piece or we'll go over some training mm -hmm. or sometimes, which is also just as valuable, sometimes we'll talk. We've had moments where we just kind of sit together and be like, hey, like how's everybody doing? Like let's kind of talk about everything. Like how do we feel? Like, and sometimes that's enough. Sometimes people just want to feel again like valued or they want to mm -hmm. feel like they're there for a reason nobody wants to come to practice and sit around and do nothing obviously like right. that feels like a waste of time and that's completely understandable mm -hmm. um but i think it is important that we just kind of keep the ball rolling and we keep the the you know the energy up so i think yeah 
really what we do is we just try to make it worth it. So we try to make it worth it when you come to practice. You're either dancing and you're blocking with something or um, you're training. We try to always implement something. You Even if it's like freestyle, we'll like mm-hmm. go in a room, we'll put on music and we'll stand in the circle and we'll freestyle just so that people are getting at least, you know, their time's worth. Yeah. That they're coming through and actually being productive with Definitely. something. Um, we... Um, me and Matt, we just try to keep it real with our dancers. Um, for me, I say that we'll block everyone in, but two weeks before, if you are still not technically pulling weight, then we will cut you in your mirror. Hmm. Um, it's just, so we will give them the opportunity. We'll block it as if everyone is in it, but then leading up to it before the hell week, quote unquote, um, if they're still not, you know, getting the right execution, the textures intention of like how we want the pieces, we tell them right then and there, like you have until next week to really get everything together and then if you need anything let us know like we'll like if you want any tips because we usually let them know like this is at will participation Mm -hmm. we're not forcing anyone to stay here like it's not a contract that you have to be here tuesday thursday from so and so like if you really want to you could just walk out and never come back um and it's not like to like scare anyone off it's just like you want to be here because you definitely want to be here with this team and you want to like put into it Mm -hmm. but of course um I always remind them like we are a competitive team, so we have to put our best foot forward. Um, I feel like those lines kind of get blurred of like, well, my friend's in it, so we'll just leave him in it, even though he might be struggling, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. But um, I always remind them like, you know, I'm just gonna keep it real. Like if you're just not on par, then we will have to take you out. Mm -hmm. And people kind of understand that. Like I say at the very beginning of the season, like I'm gonna block everyone in, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks before, if you're not pulling weight, then we have to chop you. So that kind of like, kind of motivates them to just be like, okay, I'm gonna oh, practice yeah. every single time. <laughs> yeah. And um, I did have to cut uh, a few dancers before, but they were still motivated because they still understood like the reasons why. It wasn't just because I felt some type of way and I just didn't like them, mm-hmm. I just cut them. I was like, well, it's because this and this was happening. You had since August all the way up till say November to right. get everything down. So uh, I just had to keep it really real with them. It's just like, you just gotta know like, if we're competing, we have to put our best players out there. You right. don't put your whole bench yeah. to compete in like playoffs, quote unquote, you know what I mean? Right. Um, you have to put all your good starters out. So definitely. And I mean, bringing it back to that question yet, yeah, like to stay engaged, like i like to think of it as like a basketball team, first string, second string, you know, mm-hmm. like just like, um, even if you're not going to be like, like, I guess on stage or in, on, in the spotlight, like you still have a role to play a little bit, definitely, um, yeah. in terms of either support or like doing things on the side and things like that. I've been a little loose about it this first go around with the set because um but by the time like we start blocking like everything is blocked everyone at that point has something to work on Mm -hmm. right um so like at that point is when you really want to like push them and stuff i've i've yet to cut people (laughs) and i think i'm too Mm. nice maybe okay it's it's so awkward but maybe Uh, yeah mm. It Sorry, happens. So yeah. It's just the way that the cookie crumbles, I feel yeah. like. And also, it could go the other way. Like, I think it's also we tell our dancers, like, even if you didn't make a piece, like, you should still be practicing that piece. Because, again, we'll go through drafts. And oh, yeah. sometimes I'll cast my piece and I'll set whatever I'm doing. And then out of nowhere, I'll want to add five more people. So I'll go outside to maybe people who didn't get cast in my piece. Be like, yo, do you want to be in this piece? Do you know the choreography? And then cool, like you come in and you so just kind of get added in. Yeah, you just never so know. it should. So hopefully, there's always a motivation, regardless, because things are always changing and we're always kind of plugging people in, taking people out sometimes, mm-hmm. and that's always going to change. So people, we hope that they'll stay on their toes and kind of still stay motivated to like keep practicing and keep, you know, like just keep busy. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, it's an interesting kind of like putting a mirror to ourselves as well. Sometimes it's. I find it difficult if I'm not blocked in the piece sometime yeah, to be sure. like, okay, I'm still in, but I'm like, yeah. also like I'm resting. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. like it's it, like for myself, it's sometimes hard as well. But you know, at the yeah. end of the day, I have to kind of almost remind myself, like I'm setting the example. So I got to like mm-hmm. do things. Yeah. Um, there was even like a performance. I forgot who it was. I always bring it up to them. I was like, no matter what spot you're on stage, you're on stage. Oh yeah. yeah. Whether it be four counts or not. I th- it was some wad performance. I believe it was cookies. Someone was behind the wad banner, mm-hmm. but oh, wow. was dancing their heart out <laughs> mm-hmm. to this this banner. They were like this close. You know, I was just like, no matter where you are, you will be seen. You might not be directly in front, but you might have that little group of people in the audience that sees this one person. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know, and you're so, part of a bigger picture. Oh, exactly. Yeah. It like, doesn't work without you. Yeah, for sure. it's not a solo. It's definitely about the collective. And I was mm-hmm. like, you guys are dancing for so-and-so name like commonality mm-hmm. yeah. syndicate you are representing them on stage yeah you right. know, cf so it's just like 
it's a privilege to perform on stage. So yeah. don't take it for granted. I've done performances where I was in one A count of the closer and I was hyped. I was <laughs> like, hey, the, I'm gonna kill this first. one A count. And you know what I mean? Like that's, even if it's like that, I think it's really important that it's all an understanding of, again, like it's a bigger picture and you're a part of it. So the fact that you're a part of it means everything, whether you're front center or back left, like mm -hmm. you're all being seen, like you said. And I almost, to be honest, I, it's funny cause I, uh, kind of, this is a little bit of a tangent, but like, I kind of call this like director's eye. Mm -hmm. Like I can't watch sets now without seeing it as if I'm the director. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, honestly, and I'm honestly like most of the time, not, <laughs> I'm usually not watching center. That's just me. I like, watch the back corners. I watch the back corners or I watch people in the back and I watch everything else. Not to say that if, obviously if I'm going to like watch front and center because they're killing it that's tight but <laughs> i think i always tend to like kind of look around and see how are the other people doing though because the formation yeah. sometimes that center yeah. is not enough in my eyes like you can have a dope center but if five other people behind your center are off it's in my over. head your picture is gone like it that's doesn't true. matter to yeah. me anymore I know. I mean, the first time I watch a set, I usually am able to, like, I try to watch it for what it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. But then, especially with, like, moments and stuff, I like to watch how they set up those moments yeah. and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. they're going behind there. And, like, yeah. like I don't know. It just kind of gives me ideas a little bit, yeah, too. Yeah, sure. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, inspiration, not stealing. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you develop this eye, and then you watch, and then you tell people, like, oh, did you see that? And they're like, what? Yeah. You, you go back. Yeah, this person went the other way. They're like, yeah. No, they didn't go back. They're like, oh, how'd you catch that? Yeah, She's yeah, like, yeah. Always looking for the, the imperfections, I guess. Especially mm -hmm. when you're cleaning, you just have to have that, like, yeah. little widescreen view and just, like, something out of mm -hmm. place. And you have to, like, keep tabs of that. Yeah. That's how you, I think that's also how I know I'm really enjoying something is if it takes me away from that. Yeah. If oh, I watch yes. a whole set and I don't do that thing, where I'm, where I'm looking around or kind of being like, oh, was that a roll off? Or like, you know what I mean? Like, if, <laughs> if it's a, a yeah. <laughs> but if, if I'm watching a set and it takes me away from that and I'm able to not do that and just enjoy it for what it is, that's it's how I know, set. like, that's a dope set. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't worried about your formations mm -hmm. or I wasn't worried about right. who was killing it. It was just like, I blinked and your set was over and I enjoyed it. Like, that's how I, yeah. in my head, that's how I really like know, like, okay, I really like that a lot. Cream mm -hmm. of the crop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, I want to say thanks again so much for you guys coming thank through. You. Of course. And yeah, coming thank you. And being on, being on Between Us Foos. Um, your episode is coming out soon. Nice. So <laughs> basically that wraps it up for today, guys. So make sure you guys catch us next week, Between Us Foos. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. See ya.